Hey guys, it's Mike. Welcome back to the shop. This week I've got just a couple little projects I'm working on. Um, I'm going to do a barrel nut wrench for an AR-15 barrel. I have a, a hoe over mold foregrip for an AR-15 receiver that I'm building for myself and the hull pattern is recessed in where the tube threads on and it's a little under half an inch deep and the standard AR-15 armorer's wrench doesn't even come out a half an inch so it's not going to work so I'm going to have to make my own tool for it. Checked online, I cannot find them anywhere. Um, all the forums, the, the few people that, that I saw mentioned in the forums that had purchased this said that they installed it with a strap wrench. They just took it hand tight and then did the last little bit with a strap wrench to align the hole for the gas tube to go through into the receiver. I don't really feel comfortable doing that. I'd rather do it to specs. Um, and, and the way that you're supposed to install a barrel when you put a new barrel nut on is you're supposed to, to torque it down and take it off three or four times. And that's to ensure that there's no burrs or anything on the threads and it seats properly. Um, if I was to take it hand tight and then take it to the next hole, I'm sure it'd be fine. But if there was a burr that I didn't see, there's a chance that after firing a few times and the, and the, the rifle heating up and cooling down, that it could slip and the barrel could come off and I don't want to take any chances. Um, I would never leave, let anything leave my shop that I wasn't 100% comfortable with and I'm not going to do anything for any of my guns that I'm not 100% comfortable with. So that's what we're going to do today for sure. There's a couple other things I might throw in this video but that for sure is going to be the, uh, the main project we'll see how long that takes to make. Um, I also wanted to say thanks to Randy Richards for, for stopping by the shop. Um, he came over, he actually has a brother-in-law that lives right around the corner from me and him and his brother-in-law stopped by the house and saw my tiny little shop, um, went and had some, some pizza and stuff. It was a good time. Randy brought me some uh, of his signature no-spill oil cans, which are awesome. I already have one full of cutting oil that I've been testing out um, it works really well. And then he also brought me a sample of some W1 drill rod. Um, we were talking about the different types of materials to use for making muzzle brakes. Um, and I've got some, some 4130 and I was thinking about getting some 8620 uh, to make barrel nuts out of, or to make muzzle brakes out of. Because I've had a few people ask me to make this kind of crown shaped tip, which is referred to as a breacher point um, for the shotgun muzzle brakes. And with 1018, I'm, I'm not, I'm almost certain that these tips will not stand up to that kind of abuse if the person ever actually uses it and impacts anything with it. I'm, I'm afraid these are just going to bend or wear. So he brought this over, which will be perfect for me to, to make one out of and, and test it out and see the difference on, on the strength of the two. Um, this one here is just machined out of 1018. Um, I just did this as a kind of a, an example, somebody asked if I could do it, so I worked this up and cut it and sent them a picture to see if they liked it or not. Um, so we're going to do that. And then also, I uh, went to the Anchor Lube website and I got a little sample of Anchor Lube. So if I can remember to try it, we'll try some of that. I've done a little bit of machining since I received it and I keep forgetting to try it because I've always got my other cutting oils right there. So if I can remember, We'll try some anchor lube out and see how that works also. So let me turn the camera around and we'll show you what we're going to be working on today. Alright, so here is the barrel nut and the barrel nut wrench. Now to get proper measurements, <clears throat> I'm going to measure the barrel nut and make the new wrench to fit this barrel nut. Um, I could, I guess, take copies of this, but these, the nut, the, the posts are right on the edge. Um, and I don't want my, I want to give them as much room as I possibly can. So this is what we're working with. This recess is in, you can see it covers almost my whole fingernail. And these don't, you know, they, they go in and it, it's like, they're like a sixteenth of an inch away. And this is the way the receiver is here barrel nut tightens up and the barrel sticking through here so there has to be an opening to slide up over the barrel and then a, a, 
align the holes and apply torque. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is measure these out real quick and get baseline measurements and I'll probably not follow too strict. Okay, 1799 is what we're getting there. So we'll shoot for like one seven three or sorry nine three two one point seven nine nine so as long as we're somewhere in that range we should be good I'm not really worried about finish or anything like that I'm just wor worried about it actually fitting properly so our so I could use this to draw a little circle here since I suck at drawing. So this is going to be the basic shape of the uh, of the ranch. It's going to be like that. There's going to be three holes. So total dimension from outside to outside of that is 1.793 is what we'll say there. Um, this distance here, according to this wrench, it's about an inch and a quarter. So we'll make this gap about an inch and a quarter there. Um, the pins, I, I've already measured those. They're uh, a little under, or the holes are a little over 3 16 So I'm gonna make the, um, the pins just 3 16 dowel pins. Those are readily available, you can get anywhere. So the dowel pins will be, 3 16 and then the arm coming off, I haven't quite decided how I'm gonna do it. I don't have a square brooch or anything, and my torque wrench is a half inch torque wrench. So what I'm kind of thinking about doing is just cutting a slot like this that I can stick the wrench in and apply the torque that way. So I'll just make a, a half inch cut right here, and then I'll have to cut this um, radius or close to that radius in and then hand fit it and, and weld this part on. So I'm gonna go the height, this to the bottom here, take a quick measurement, is 0.46. So I'll make it at least, make a side drawing here. I'm gonna aim for, oops, I'm thinking three quarters, not writing 750. So we'll go three quarters of an inch thick or thereabouts. Um, I've got some quarter inch flat bar sitting around that might work for this. So we'll see. Um, If that'll if that'll work or not, um, and then the pins will be coming out this way. So this is the basic idea of what I'm gonna try to build here. Um, the whole pattern um, I measured earlier, and it was. From outside to outside, let me get it close here. It was like one seven eight, I think. Um, but I, I figured that out. It, it, the whole pattern is going to be one point five five four. 
Um, so when I finish the, I'll, I'll machine the outside, I'll put a pass through hole in the part, then I'll part it off and put it in the indexing head, center and offset for the hole pattern, and I'll drill the three holes for the, the hole pattern. And then it'll just be getting this side piece machined. Also, real quick before I take off, I wanted to let you guys know, um, I have a bunch of these muzzle brakes. Um, I've got like 10 or 15 of them machined up. Um, these are threaded half 28 for an AR-15, and it's got a little bit bigger than a quarter inch pass-through for a 223 rifle is what I built these for. So if you're interested, I've got a bunch of these sitting around. These are... Uh, I'll sell these for like 40 bucks if you're interested, shoot me an email, um, which I'll throw up like right here. Um, they're Duracoated, flat, or tactical black, um, which pretty closely matches the uh, anodized finish on most ARs. So if you're interested, shoot me a comment and let me know. Also, if you are a veteran or law enforcement officer, I do provide a, a law enforcement military discount. So Anything that I sell, I'll give a 10% discount to any veteran or law enforcement. So make sure you let me know that when you place the order so we can get you a discount. All right, now we'll get to the machining. All right, so my saw is cutting not so great. So I'm going to do a cleanup cut on this real quick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it down to 7 eighths, or 1 and 7 eighths. I'm going to go ahead and use my mag base here. It's not like it's real critical, but... Taking 
something down to a specific size. And I know I've got some meat to play with. I always make a little finishing cut so that <clears throat> just a real light skim cut to see where I'm at. Okay, I'm at 1.991. So I've got Two hundred thousandths to take off, and I think for that I'm going to move the camera back a little bit here onto my ways. I'm sorry for the shaky camera. I just don't want it to be too close to the action here. I'm getting chips flung all over it. after we're done here. All right, so we are set, set, set. Seven nine. Right now we're at one point eight two four. Thousand small off. I've got the muzzle or barrel nut here. And you know what? That's hitting on the inner shoulder there, but it's not hitting, it's not really rubbing the threads, and it's got a little bit of wiggle room. I think I might leave it like that. debating here whether I should just stick with my original yeah I think I'm just gonna go with my original plan not change things up all right so we need the 34 thousandths to come off Seven nine six, which should be plenty. Yep, right there we're, we're bottoming out into the 
barrel nuts, so we're good. Now the hole, I'm going to copy this, and this is one point three eight. So I'm going to go grab my drills and step drill this thing out so we can cut it off and then work on the other milling operations. All right, well, we're ready to start stepping this out here. Now, <clears throat> I don't like to do a lot of really heavy drilling on this machine, or on any for that matter. I'd rather just slowly step it out. This hole really only needs to go just barely beyond the shoulder so that when I part it off, I can, I'll have a clear path all the way through. So I'm not really worried about the little extra time it's going to take me with, you know, stepping out or stepping up from a small hole and then boring the last little bit. it for the drilling so I'm gonna clean up a little bit real quick and then bring you guys back 